This is Dr. Venkatesh Karthikeyan, first year community and family medicine postgraduate from AIMS Patna. I'm here to give you an outline about how to approach your PG thesis. The first step in this process is to identify the area of your interest. Like my area of interest was mental health, non-communicable diseases and something related to technology. So you need to find which is your area of interest according to your specialty. Once you are able to identify this area of interest, then you should find out what is your guide's area of interest. Like you need to go through the Google Scholar and PubMed and search your guide's name and you should see what are the publications he has made, in which areas your guide has made uh, articles and the area which he is interested in. When the a uh, areas of interest for you and your guide matches, then you can definitely uh, choose your topic in that area. So once you finalize the area, then you should do literature reviews. You should uh, search for the related topics in PubMed and Google Scholar. Initially, uh, you should have. Uh, so you, uh, initially, you should search in PubMed where you will get quality journals. So you should be seeing what type of studies are being done, whether the study is uh, feasible in our setting, what is the cost incurred, what is the methodology. So everything you need to go through. At least uh, 30 to 40 research articles you should go through in PubMed. Once you are uh, getting a decent shape after reading articles in PubMed, you should uh, broaden your uh, search by visiting the Google Scholar. The difference between PubMed and Google Scholar is that PubMed has high quality journals, whereas Google has uh, Google Scholar has both uh, high quality as well as poor quality journals. So, but this uh, search in Google Scholar will help you to have an idea about broad topics. Like it will give you a broad idea. And uh, if you want to focus on methodology, uh, how good the paper is, then you should search for articles in PubMed. Once you find those articles and read those articles, you will definitely get an idea about uh, which topic uh, should be uh, taken for research, which is feasible and uh, which we can complete within this three years time period. So once you are done with it, then you should prepare your proposal. Preparing your proposal have the following steps. The first step is that you should identify the problem statement. For example, if you are doing something related to diabetes, then you should uh, you should mention the prevalence of diabetes across the world, why it is significant, what is the prevalence of diabetes in India, and then in your local state. For example, I'm in Bihar now. What is the prevalence of diabetes in Bihar? And if there is data available in my particular uh, city, Patna, then what is the prevalence of uh, diabetes in, in Patna? So you should mention those prevalences. Then you should mention the, uh, what to say, glycemic control in each of these levels like worldwide, nationwide, state-wise and uh, in your city. What is the control status? So which and all parameters are available over the internet, over the uh, PubMed, you, you should identify those and you should include that in the problem statement. Problem statement in simple terms means that why you are doing this study, uh, like what is the problem state, what is the magnitude of problem uh, which you are going to take upon. Uh, so once you are done with the problem statement, then you should focus on rational. Rational is nothing but the logic behind why you are doing this study. For example, if I'm doing a study to estimate the prevalence of diabetes in Bihar, then why I'm doing this study? I'm doing this study so that I can estimate how much of people, how many males, how much females, what is the age group, so what are the complications. So all these I can estimate and this data will help me in uh, early uh, initiation of early treatments and other things. So like that, what is the logic behind doing this uh, uh, research doing this thesis you should explain in rational the third thing you need to focus is on novelty so everyone uh, does the prevalence even mbbs students uh, uh, estimate the prevalence of diabetes so what new thing you are doing what is what you are going to add to the existing literature that you need to mention in the novelty next topic which i mean next thing which you should focus is on expected outcome and application as i said earlier what am i expecting i am expecting like 40% uh, of uh, people in patna have diabetes so what is the outcome you're expecting i am expecting the uh, estimation of prevalence of diabetes in patna so what is the outcome i'm expecting and once i get the outcome how i'm going to apply it i'm going to uh, i'm going to direct my medical officers to start to screen for diabetes and initiate treatment early so those kind of expected outcome and application of it that you should mention clearly after that you should mention your research questions so what are the questions which you are going to address? For example, in our case, what is the prevalence of diabetes is the first question. The second question, uh, what are the complications which are seen in young diabetics? That can be the second question. Like that, 
what are the different questions you are going to answer which you are going to try to find the answer for that you should uh, mention in the research question next you should mention the research hypothesis for example if you are comparing drug a versus drug b for treatment of diabetes uh, you are going to do the study with the hypothesis that drug a is better than drug b then that is going to be a research hypothesis next topic is the aims uh, what are the what are the aims of the study uh, like why you are doing the study that should be mentioning it and how we are going to do it that will be in your objective objective is nothing but an action word included uh, so for example the objective in our case would be uh, to estimate the prevalence estimate the is an action word so like those kind of action words should be included when you are framing your objectives the next thing which you should do is the review of literature so you should at least for at least for the submission of synopsis which is nothing but a brief proposed proposal about your pg thesis you should be referring at least 5 to 10 uh, articles and uh, not the full articles but you should quote the relevant information to your study and uh, like for example if i'm referring to four or five articles from different authors what were the prevalence in their studies and uh, what are the new findings which they uh, which they could uh, Uh, which they could publish so everything key point you should be mentioning in the review of literature at least for very minimum of 4 to 5 articles so that is the review of literature next comes the very important part that is the methodology so how we are going to do the study at most focus is to be given on that first thing is the study design so whether you are going to do as a cross sectional study or whether you are going to do it as a case control study or cohort study or a randomized control trial so that you need to decide how can you decide that can be done based on your literature review uh, of previously published articles and uh, deciding uh, based on the feasibility as well going to be a study participants what is the inclusion criteria what is the exclusion criteria so once you uh, uh, determine who are going to be the study participant and with and in which study setting you are going to do it then you should move towards calculating the sample size and the sampling techniques first is the sampling technique what is the sampling technique you are going to choose whether it's like a simple uh, simple random sampling or systematic random sampling convenient sampling snowball sampling so there are different uh, sampling methods and uh, which method you are going to employ in order to choose your study participants you should have a clear cut idea at the beginning of study itself next is the sample size calculations so you cannot uh, go and uh, take data from all diabetics all the diabetic patients in patna you need to have a limited sample size uh, due to again uh, feasibility reasons and availability of manpower money and etc so that sample size calculation you should be calculating so the for uh, for determining the sampling procedures and calculating sample size you can take the help of statisticians in your department or someone who is well versed in doing these calculations this is very important step because after uh, after completing your study or during the middle of your study you cannot determine the sample size or sampling technique it should be well planned in advance and it should be in another stage of conception of this uh, proposal itself next is the study procedure so every step step by step you should have a clear idea first step what i will do first step i will prepare a proposal then i will present in the department uh, research committee then i will present in the iec irc then i will start collecting data so uh, each and every step right from beginning till the end you should have a clear flow chart of how we are going to proceed for next thing is the designing the tool so how we are going to collect data are you going to design a questionnaire if so is that questionnaire validated or it's going to be a standardized questionnaire so what tool you are going to use that should be ready at the beginning itself so once you have a strong tool once you have a clear cut tool then the whole process becomes easy or else the issue will be uh, uh, throughout the data collection as well as during the analysis also so you should have a proper study tool designed at the beginning itself next thing you should be able to list out the dependent and independent variables which are relevant to your studies and again uh, the next thing is the statistical analysis plan once you get the data how we are going to analyze it what are the things you are going to describe what are the correlations you are going to see so everything you should discuss with your statistician and guide and prepare dummy tables and uh, you should have a clear vision of how we are going to analyze the data once the whole data is with you that is very important and how we are going to represent the data like you are going to represent it in form of column charts or pie charts so everything you should have a clear idea in the beginning itself after that you should have uh, mention about the limitations of study so what are the potential limitations 
in your study uh, which might be an issue due to feasibility reasons or availability reasons so what are the limitations of your study that you should be mentioning in the beginning itself and risks and benefits if any you should mention and if your uh, study includes some interventions or some drug trials then uh, there is need to mention about the budget as well and uh, if you are doing some clinical trials then you should get permissions from the other concerned authority also so once you prepare a proposal with all the headings mentioned above you should submit it to the drc department uh, research committee so after discussion in the drc uh, it will be sent to the irc and iec which is nothing but the institute ethics committee and institute research committee so once you get a clearance from ethics committee and research committee you can go with the data collection you should not start your data collection before approval from iec and irc so uh, you can collect the data usually all the process like uh, right from preparing proposal till submission to irc and iec it usually takes place in the first 6 uh, to 7 months of the uh, pg uh, depending upon the institute and data collection usually happens in the second year so second whole year is more towards data collection and third year first half of third year is for data analysis and writing your thesis so once you get the permission from irc and iec it's ideal to start the data collection we should not start data collection before getting their approval okay so the first year is mainly for preparing this proposal and submission of the thesis synopsis once you're done with submission of thesis synopsis then uh, you should wait for uh, iec and irc approval and ideally uh, data collection starts in second the beginning of second year of your pg this again depends upon uh, which institute you are studying in okay so the second year is for data collection and the first half of third year is for data analysis report writing and thesis writing so you will be uh, analyzing the data you will be generating results and you will be uh, writing your thesis and most of it will should be complete by the first half year first half of your third year so this is all the basic outline about the steps involved in doing your thesis like there might be many challenges in between and uh, you should always feel free to take help of your guide or, or the help of your seniors who have already done it it's not a very big task it's not a uh, what to say unachievable thing but it needs constant efforts and follow up so that you can submit your pg uh, thesis uh, successfully the main motto of uh, doing a pg dissertation is to help the postgraduate students to get oriented towards the research methodology so we are not more bothered about the results or we are not doing it for some uh, winning some awards or nobel prize our main focus is to understand what are the basic steps involved in research so once we are clear with it we can we can write a lot of papers we can do a lot of research when we become consultants so that is the ultimate motto behind having this concept of pg thesis hope uh, this video was useful to you if you have any doubts you can always feel uh, free to get back to me uh, i'm quite active in telegram and youtube Uh, you can write to me so until we meet next time this is dr venkatesh karthikeyan signing off thank you